So now that we understand virtual condition, we can show how to use this calculation for inspection methods as well. Now in Unit 5, we talked about how to inspect the location of holes. We would get a height gauge, we would painfully find out where the hole is in the y direction, where the hole is in the x direction, and use our calculation. Another way we can check the position, though, is just have a gauge, a functional gauge, a set of worst case pins, and if it fits, it ships. So how would we build a functional gauge to check this position tolerance here? Well, the gauge would need the datums on there because it has a position tolerance to ABC. You need a gauge that would mount to A, that would mount to B, and would mount to C. And it would look like this. And these red pins would be sized out to check that position tolerance. So what size would we make these pins? Virtual condition. So what is the virtual condition of this hole? Smallest hole 14.7, that's MMC, minus the position tolerance of 0.6 gives you a 14.1 virtual condition. And that's what size you would make the pins. And that makes sense. If you check the hole with a 0.6 under pin, then you're checking to see if it's in position within 0.6. Now the problem with a functional gauge is it only gives you one answer, either pass or fail. It either passes the gauge or it fails the gauge. And you don't know which hole is failed, and you don't know how much it's out. So we can use this boundary method for evaluating position even using a CMM. So a CMM would align to the datum reference frame on our, on our imperfect part. And then it would expand our gauge pin, theoretically, an actual mating envelope at the true position. So the CMN would move the basic address of 20 and 25 and expand the biggest envelope until it hits part of the surface. And that comes in at 14.2. That's what we call the related actual mating envelope. And then we can compare that related actual mating envelope to the virtual condition, which is the worst case it's allowed to be. So here's what an inspection report would look like. The virtual condition allowed is 14.1. And if our related actual mating envelope comes in bigger than that, that means the hole is closer to its true position, which means that it's good. So when our related AME comes in bigger, that would be good. Now in our second example, we couldn't expand the gauge pin big enough. And so that means the hole is shifted too much out of where it's supposed to be, which means the position is bad. So in the second example, our related AME is less than our virtual condition, so we'd reject that part. So now we know more than pass or fail. We know which hole is bad, which one is good, and how bad it is. It's actually just out just a little bit, just outside of its tolerance zone. So if we compare these two methods, what we learned in Unit 5 is what we call in the standard the axis method. The axis method checks to see if the hole's axis is within this variable size tolerance zone. The tolerance zone is increasing as the size of the hole increases because that bonus tolerance. Now the surface method just looks at it a little different, says no, instead of checking to see if the axis falls within this variable size tolerance zone, when we check to see if the surface clears a virtual condition boundary. So there are two methods to verify the whole axis method, which is most common, but there is new traction gaining in the world for surface-based measurement systems instead. Now look at the next video. There is a slight difference between the axis method and surface method that I want you to be aware of.